as part of our uh, associate training series, uh, the motor vehicle related services, uh, otherwise oftentimes referred to as the traffic benefit. Uh, there are a few other services provided in the motor vehicle related services, and we'll be touching on those at the end. Uh, but the bulk of the services under this benefit is obviously the traffic benefits, and that is where we receive most of our calls. To the next slide. We yes. see Kevin. We see Kevin. Um, we are going to have uh, present with us tonight our tra traffic attorney, uh, who is uh, Mr. Kevin Kehoe. Uh, as you can see, he was he's been admitted since 1991. Uh, he practices general law, uh, a lot of criminal defense, family law, and of course traffic cases. He's been with us since 2015. He has quite a bit of history. He has worked uh, as a special agent for the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, he has also worked for the Office of Inspector General. Uh, he taught as an adjunct professor of legal education at Duquesne, and uh, he's licensed to practice in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Federal Western District Court of Pennsylvania, the Third Circuit, and he is also admitted uh, with the United States Supreme Court. He's also uh, our local celebrity has been on TV. We fondly have referred to him in the past as the mayor. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're very happy to have him with us tonight to assist in our presentation. Thank you. Hold on one second. So just an overview of what we're going to be uh, covering. Uh, first, we're going to be covering the motor vehicle services that are provided in the legal family plan, which is the basic family plan that's being uh, sold uh, by associates. This is not uh, going to cover any of the benefits provided by the Primerica plan, uh, the national plan, or uh, any sort of Old, older plans that are still hanging around out there. Uh, those do have slightly different language when it comes to the motor vehicle benefits. So what we're going to be covering is what is what is being sold out there now as the basic family plan. Uh, we're going to discuss who's covered under this benefit, uh, what services are covered and provided versus uh, under the benefit versus uh, a referral under the preferred member discount, uh, which is the uh, discounted fees that uh, was the catch-all provision uh, for uh, the legal plan. Uh, we're also going to be going like I said, touching briefly on the other services provided under the motor vehicle services plan. And you went too fast for me, Noemi. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. And I'm not sure, I can't remember what the last thing said, but we'll be touching on that too. I think it was traffic stops. <laughs> so who's covered under this benefit? And we get that question asked a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, when a member calls in, they're not sure uh, if it's because it's their spouse or their child if they would uh, receive any benefits under this traffic benefit. Uh, good news, uh, the member and their spouse are covered. Unmarried children who are under the age of 26 who are either permanent residents of the member's household or full-time students. Uh, so we do get a lot of questions, you know, my, my child's at Duquesne, are they still covered? Yes, they are. If they're under age 26, they're still covered. Uh, children under 18, for whom the member or the member's spouse is the legal guardian. Dependent children, no matter their age, who are physically disabled or mentally incapacitated, uh, who live with the member or their spouse. And to qualify, a dependent is a natural or adopted child of the member or the member's spouse. Next, we're going to be going into some scenarios. And we'll have these throughout the presentation. So we'll do a little bit of information and then some scenarios uh, to reflect on the information we just covered. Okay. Scenario number one, Sandra's daughter, Alicia, is 20 years old and lives at home. She is a dependent on her membership. Alicia received a citation just a few miles from her home for improper passing, an offense which carries three points. Would her defense be covered under her traffic benefit or is it covered under the preferred member discount? And the answer is? The traffic benefit. Good news. Uh, it will be covered. Under the legal plan, the traffic benefit applies to all covered persons on the membership, which we just went over. Uh, the definition of a covered person does include dependents. So Alicia, because she's under 26 and living at home, would be able to utilize the traffic benefit. 
Um, Kim has a question about disabled dependents. Go ahead, Kim. I just was wondering, so for example, my son is diagnosed with cerebral palsy and I've had this question from other people. So like, for example, Nick's not in a home. He's still, you know, under the age of 18. But once he, if he gets older, let's say we end up having to stick him into a home or something else, he wouldn't technically be living at home. My understanding is that for physically or mentally disabled, that they have to at least be 51% financially dependent upon, like, their parents. Is that correct? That is specifically outlined in the plan. I didn't do the entire language of the plan but that is specified in the plan so yes okay okay mm -hmm. i just wanted to yep. double check thank mm -hmm. you you're welcome thanks for your question kim okay so what, what type go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> what types of traffic violations are covered Go ahead, Belinda. So we have defense of all moving traffic violations, except for those that result in misdemeanor or felony charges. And I'm going to have uh, Attorney Kehoe explain here uh, what constitutes a moving violation versus a non-moving violation, and also uh, discuss a little bit about traffic tic camera tickets and are they covered? Well, a moving violation is pretty self-explanatory. It's generally when you're doing something on the road that is in violation of state law or sometimes turnpike regulations. Those generally have points associated with them. And for the most part, those are some, well, at least in Pennsylvania, those are summary offenses. In Pennsylvania, there are three levels of criminal uh, violations. Summary, which are the lowest, followed by misdemeanor and felony charges. The, the best way to explain it is a summary. It's punishable by normally a fine, but no more than 90 days in jail. A misdemeanor is punishable by at least a year in jail, and a felony is multiple years in jail. Um, there are no misdemeanor and felony traffic violations. Though the way I've seen people driving lately, there should be. Um, Non-moving violations are your um, expired inspection, expired, insur expired insurance, um, and expired registration. And of course, because parking tickets are uh, a non-moving violation by the very nature of the name, they are a parking violation. Parking violations have no points or suspensions associated with them. Therefore, they have no adverse impact on a person's driver's license, which is key for coverage under the traffic benefit. It has to have, the violation has to have an adverse impact on the driver's uh, Pennsylvania driver's license. Um, and camera tickets are a uh, new uh, a, a new thing in Pennsylvania. They've been in Philadelphia for several years. Uh, the legislature was just uh, passing the law that allowed the turnpike to use them. They carry no points. So under this plan, if you get a camera ticket, it's a fine only, it has no adverse impact, and it would not be covered under the traffic benefit. It would be a straight uh, preferred member discount referral if you wanna fight it. And then of course we have the uh, defense for serious criminal charges, manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter, negligent homicide, vehicular homicide, arising from the permitted use of the motor vehicle. So, um, we don't encounter those a whole lot, thank goodness, uh, but uh, those are items that are also covered under the plan. I saw there was a question if camera tickets are reported on a driving record and basically any type of violation gets reported to PennDOT. It doesn't, it's part of your driver history and it's separate from any type of moving violation, but PennDOT keeps a driver history on every single person. And even if you have a DUI and you go through the Accelerated Rehabilitative Disposition Program and have it expunged, PennDOT will keep a record of that. Uh, this is all with respect to Pennsylvania, Kim. It's not uh, for any of the other states. And uh, 
with respect to violations in other states, Pennsylvania doesn't record points from other jurisdictions. Therefore, tickets out of state do not have any adverse impact on your driver's license. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Okay, and then I'm also gonna have Kevin just explain who issues the traffic violation, uh, what are points, how are they assessed, and who determines the points charged for each offense. There's a little bit of confusion that uh, we also oftentimes have members think that the officer assigned the points or, or something of that nature. So I'm gonna have Kevin clear that up a little bit for us. The traffic violation is issued by uh, a police officer or a state trooper. Even the camera tickets have to be signed off by a law enforcement officer. Uh, they don't determine the points. The points are statutory, meaning that the state legislature assigned the points and there are varying point values for each violation. Uh, the, uh, uh, the thing that most people have to worry about is the accumulation of points. Um, if you accumulate six points, and it doesn't matter if it's over a couple of years, if you have a total of six points, um, at that point, you will have to take a written traffic test within 30 days of receiving notice of the test. And you must pass that test within those 30 days that they give you. If you don't pass it, your license will be suspended until such time as you do pass it. Once you pass it, two points are taken off of your point accumulation, and thereafter, three points age off of your driving record for every year that you go without a violation that has points. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, impact on driving and insurance records. For the traffic benefit to apply, the violation must have a negative impact on the member's driving or insurance record. Different states have different laws, so what may appear on a record in one state may not appear in another. How can a traffic violation impact my insurance record and when? And uh, an interesting fact, a single traffic ticket uh, in Pennsylvania can raise car insurance costs as much as 82%. So do you want to address that, Kevin? Certainly. For it to have and uh, for a traffic ticket to affect your insurance, you have to get three points or more. A violation of two points is not reported. It has no effect on your driver's license. Um, it has no effect on your uh, insurance. So it's when you get three points and above, and just as an example, um, it, a lot of speeding tickets out there. But if you're going between six and 10 miles over and you're stopped, it's only two points. So sometimes if you have no other points, you can actually afford to pay the ticket and not worry about it. If say you get the ticket out in Harrisburg and you live in Pittsburgh. So instead of having to drive out to the magistrate in Harrisburg and the expense involved of that, you can simply pay that because it's only two points. Um, versus a speeding ticket where you're 26 or more miles above the speed limit, that's five points. So that will definitely negatively impact your insurance. And the amount of that impact, the percentage Belinda brought up, that's completely determined by your car insurance company. The state has no control over it. The officer has no control over it. They don't know what's going to happen. So any issue with your rate being raised has to be addressed between you and your insurance company, not with the court. Can you uh, briefly just describe uh, what um, can happen uh, if you decide to uh, challenge a ticket on your own? Uh, are you required to appear? Uh, could you go through that general process? Pennsylvania requires, if you challenge the ticket, if you request a hearing, you'll be given a hearing date. You are required to appear. Pennsylvania um, has a, uh, adapted to the COVID situation because they're doing some remote hearings, um, but you still have to appear remotely. And if they're having an in-person hearing lately, 
you check in, you go out to your car, you wait, they text you or call you, then you come in and you have your hearing before the judge. Even if you have a lawyer representing you, they require the appearance of the defendant. Some other states don't do that. Um, and in Pennsylvania, the only way that a defendant cannot appear is if they get the, the permission of the court to not appear or to appear remotely. Thank you. You're welcome. Kevin. We're gonna go into scenario number two. James receives a traffic citation for traveling 15 miles over the posted speed limit. The next day, he calls his legal shield provider firm and asks for assistance in fighting the ticket. Would this be covered under the, benef the traffic benefit or is this a preferred member discount? And the answer? Is the traffic benefit. This would be covered by the traffic benefit. Speeding is an offense that carries points in Pennsylvania. The greater the speed, the higher the points assigned. Under the legal plan, there is coverage for tickets and violations that adversely impact the driving and insurance records, which we've all just been discussing. Scenario number three. <clears throat> Elliot goes to Virginia to visit his family and he obtains a reckless driving charge in Virginia. He calls his legal shield provider firm for assistance under his traffic benefit. Would this be covered under his traffic benefit or the preferred member discount? It'll be the preferred member discount. And after I read why, I'll have Kevin elaborate because this is his favorite, favorite topic. <laughs> In the Commonwealth of Virginia, reckless driving is a misdemeanor offense, making it a criminal charge. What might be a traffic offense in one state can be a criminal offense in another. As stated in the legal plan, coverage is provided for the defense of all moving traffic violations except for those violations that result in misdemeanor or felony violations. So take it away, Kevin. <laughs> well, Virginia um, is brutal with traffic tickets and they've criminalized speeding. If you are 20 miles over the posted speed limit or above 80 miles an hour, it's still reckless driving considered a traffic offense, but it's a misdemeanor criminal violation also, which carries a penalty of up to 15 days in jail. And Virginia is one of those states that if you hire an attorney, you can probably just have them appear on your behalf. Um, you, you should tell your members that they should never consider representing themselves in the Commonwealth of Virginia because they will lose. It's, they are brutal. They don't, for some reason they love to ticket Pennsylvania drivers and with it being a criminal offense if they are found guilty then they will have a criminal record because this will be reported onto the FBI's NCIC database and if a criminal record check is run it will show this criminal conviction and a misdemeanor violation can cause issues like with purchasing a handgun um, getting a job, uh, any number of issues there. Um, there. If we can step back for a second, I saw there was a question about is what is it worth challenging a camera ticket? And I just wanted to say no. It's they tag you based on radar and the camera catching your license and it, the standard of proof that you would have to be showing is so high and you'd have to prove that the radar was ineffective. So you're looking at uh, getting a subpoena to get a copy of the radar records. And for the typical camera ticket, it's a hundred dollars. And you're looking at spending possibly over a thousand dollars to challenge it. Sorry. No, that's okay. And just to touch on, um, what Kevin was saying about Virginia, it, it just really sheds a light on the fact that every state is different. So, you know, if a member wow. has, if a member has a ticket from another state, they sh shouldn't just assume that it's going to be handled the same way Pennsylvania would handle it. So I strongly encourage, we have a wonderful network of provider firms out there that we maintain great relationships with. So when they ha receive an out of state ticket they need to call in you know if they think that it's just going to be like how Pennsylvania would ha handle it that's not always going to be the case and it's very important uh, that 
we get them the legal advice that they need to make sure that something like a speeding ticket in the Commonwealth of Virginia doesn't come back to haunt them uh, with a criminal charge and a criminal record. And Belinda, if I could follow up on that, there's sure. also, it's very important that members read the ticket. Um, if every state has a different response time, Pennsylvania, you have 10 days from the day the ticket was issued in which to file your plea of guilty or not guilty. Failing to respond in that 10 day period uh, can result in a bench warrant for your arrest and your license being suspended for failing to appear. And other states have similar rules. So if you get a ticket, read it, know what the, their requirements are, and then immediately send it to us for review. There should be no way you shouldn't get the ticket on a Saturday and next Thursday just like, oh, hey, I should send that in. Because once it's sent in, I have up to three business days to review it. They are extremely time sensitive. So the sooner the sooner you can have those members get those to us, the better. Hey, Belinda, do we have another question? I can't see the questions, but I've seen some. I, I saw Mike pop up a tip. Um, trying to see here. I'm actually not able to open my comments the way I have my. Uh, he said, if you're not driving the car, it can be a defense to some traffic tickets, but not all. Work zone violations on the turnpike, the car owner is responsible for the fine, regardless of whether you are actually driving. And that would be the same thing with a, um, uh, a traffic cam ticket. If you're not driving, it's, it's not going to be a defense because the car was speeding and you're the owner of the car. Okay, thanks, let's move along. Reminder, traffic tickets must be, per, must be submitted to the provider attorney at least five working days prior to the hearing, the hearing date to receive your motor vehicle related services. So just as Kevin said, sorry, Melinda, That's okay. it is imperative that you instruct your members as soon as they get their tickets to get it over to us. We um, now have the ability to have the members text us so they can text us their tickets. Um, the main number is the number you can use for texting. So the 412-391-7339 number. They can text that to us, we'll get it, and we'll get their intake open up and get them a call with Kevin. We do our absolute best to find people attorneys, but you know, attorneys' schedules fill up very quickly, especially when it comes to traffic hearings and the like. So we need to have that, that time uh, to find them the assistance that they need. And then the other traditional ways of getting the ticket to us, either emailing, faxing, but our newest feature that we have is texting and those of you that have received text or give it, sent us text, it is the easiest and quickest way to get to us. We're gonna talk about exclusions to the traffic benefit. Go ahead, Belinda. Yep, there are several, uh, so I have them over the, spanned over a few slides and then we'll do a couple of, ex, a few examples uh, showing how the exclusions apply. Um, the first exclusion is pre-existing conditions. So you can't get a traffic ticket on Friday, decide to join Legal Shield on Monday and expect coverage. Uh, you know, we can certainly give you the preferred member discount, uh, but that's not going to be covered under the traffic benefit. Any matter where the covered person is under the influence so of alcohol, intoxicants, controlled substances, uh, you know, DUI, uh, prescription drugs, that sort of thing. Um, any matters determined by the consulting attorney to be frivolous, groundless, or without merit. I don't recall the last time we used that exclusion, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it is in there. Uh, and certainly if that is a determination that we're going to make, we're certainly going to have more than one person review it. Uh, Kevin would advise me, I would review it. I would also review it with Michael and Noemi, and we would make a determination whether or not that, that is indeed the case. Other exclusions, driving a commercial vehicle. Um, any matter associated with hit and run charges, leaving the scene of an accident or similar charges, criminal charges, any matters, tickets or violations which do not adversely impact a driving record or insurance record, any matter where the covered person is driving without a valid license, insurance, proper registration, inspection or properly working equipment, 
and any appeal or other post-judgment relief action. So okay, if they made a bad decision, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Belinda. <laughs> no, if they made a bad decision and paid the, paid the ticket and now they changed their mind and they want to appeal it, uh, that's going to be an exclusion for the coverage. Now, these things can be covered under the preferred member discount, but they're not going to be covered under the traffic benefit. Kevin, can you give us some examples of any matters or tickets of violations that would not adversely impact your driving record and that for their insurance that we sometimes get calls about? Well, parking tickets would be the number one. It's just it, it has no penalties other than the fine. Um, the other is uh, there's a stop sign violation. It's um, called failure. Uh, it, it's obedience to traffic control devices. It's a 3111. It has absolutely no points. So um, that would be another one where it's really not worth fighting. And then lastly, if you're stopped for speeding and you're, say you're going 70 in a 55 mile an hour zone, your actual speed, but you're cited for 60 in a 55 mile an hour zone. That violation as written carries no points and therefore it's not covered under the traffic benefit. Even though your actual speed was higher than that. And my recommendation will always be that you just pay the ticket because uh, most people don't understand that if you challenge a no point ticket, no point speeding ticket, when you get to the hearing the officer or trooper has the ability to amend the charge to reflect your true rate, which then will carry like 15 miles over is a three point violation. And therefore you have the impact and your traffic benefit wouldn't kick in. You're therefore hearing the hearing's not going to be continued if that happens. So your option then would be to appeal it, which of course is a preferred member discount. What about any out-of-state violations? Out-of-state violations have no, for the most part, have no adverse impact when they have points because PennDOT doesn't record them. The only thing that you have to worry about is um, if you've got a suspension from another state. If you've done something that's a suspension, PennDOT will, um, honor the suspension in another state and then it'll be a determination of whether or not that's covered what the offense is that got you suspended um, one of the things i want to point out on this plan with the traffic with the commercial vehicle that doesn't mean if you're driving the big box truck or the amazon delivery van that means if you're driving your personal business which is in for something like uber Lyft, Uber Eats, you're working as a courier and you're driving your own car, you get a ticket while you're performing that function, that is considered a commercial vehicle under this plan. Thanks, Kevin. You're now, welcome. scenario number four. Bobby has been charged with driving under the influence, DUI, and careless driving. He calls his Legal Shield provider for him and asks to be provided with an attorney at no charge under his ben traffic benefits. Is this covered by his traffic benefit or preferred member discount? And that is the preferred member discount. He's been charged with DUI, a criminal offense. Uh, the careless driving charge will not be separable from the DUI charge. Both will be handled in criminal court. Under the exclusions, uh, there's no coverage for any matter in which it's alleged that the covered person is under the influence or impaired by alcohol and other substances. Uh, Bobby can, however, be referred to a criminal defense attorney under the preferred member discount. Thanks, Belinda. Scenario number five. do have to step away, so I'm going to have Kevin read the answer, okay? Sure. All right. Kayla works as an independent contractor for a trucking company. While driving her 18-wheeler on the turnpike, she is charged with a toll violation. When she receives her ticket, she calls her Legal Shield provider law firm. Is this ticket covered by her traffic benefit or preferred member discount? This is a straight preferred member discount uh, ticket. 
the uh, any matter associated with driving a commercial vehicle. Uh, commercial vehicle is defined as a motor vehicle being driven by a covered person for commercial or income producing purposes. Uh, so Kayla can get her referral under the preferred member discount. This goes back to what I was saying when I jumped the gun there, that um, if you're driving for Uber, Uber Eats, Lyft, anything like that, regardless of whether you're uh, in your car or not, it's not covered because that's a income generating activity. Thanks. Scenario number six. Noah finds a parking ticket on his windshield. He calls his legal shield provider firm because he would like to have an attorney fight the ticket for him at no charge. Is this covered by the traffic benefit or the preferred member discount? Belinda, why is it covered by the preferred member discount? As a parking ticket is a non-moving violation, it's something that Kevin's been discussing uh, throughout here. Uh, non-moving violations are excluded from coverage under the traffic benefit. Additionally, a parking ticket does not adversely impact her driving or insurance records. As such, this would fall under the preferred member discount. Kevin, do you see if we have any questions? Let me see. I know Mike's pushing the Uber plan. <laughs> trying to get this. Uh, okay. Hey, no, I mean, oh. I had a question. Sure. What was the phone number again that you could text the ticket to? Oh, sure. The, the phone number you can text is our yep. main legal shield number, which is 412-391-7339. Thank you. And just take a picture of your ticket and text it to us. Is that better than using the phone app? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I just tell you right now, please avoid the phone app when you're sending a ticket. Yeah, if your members have documents to send in under an existing intake, and this goes for anything, and they want to text it to us, they can to that number. Um, that's Texting is something that we started doing back in late July, I believe, and it is working out wonderfully. Uh, we're communicating a lot by text, and we can also accept documents on open intakes and traffic tickets uh, via text. So it's working out very well. Awesome. Scenario number seven. Brian is stopped at a red light when he notices a police car stopped behind him, activating its lights. An officer approaches him in his car and advises him that his registration is expired. What, what would, excuse me, would this matter be covered by the traffic benefit or the preferred member discount? Belinda? And we're going through exceptions here. So that's the preferred member discount. Excluded matters include any matter associated with charges that the covered person is driving without a valid operator's license, re required insurance, registration, inspection, or properly working equipment. Scenario number eight. Jessica calls in regarding a ticket that she received regarding failing to yield at a yield sign. She has already pleaded guilty and paid the fine but did not realize that it would carry three points placed on her license. She would now like assistance in appealing this matter. Is this covered under the traffic benefit or the preferred member discount? Preferred member discount. Unfortunately, this is an appeal uh, and any appeals and motions for post judgment relief are specifically excluded. Had Jessica called when she first received the ticket, we could have covered it. Uh, but since this is an appeal, it will be covered under the preferred member discount. So have your members contact us before they do anything with the ticket. Even if it's something minor. Scenario number nine. Robert receives a citation for careless driving, an offense that carries three points. He calls in, requests for a referral under his traffic benefits, and he would like an attorney to appear on his behalf as he does not have, he does not have to appear. And is this covered under the traffic benefit or the preferred member discount? Belinda? It will be covered under the traffic benefit because it fits clearly into the moving violation coverage and also would potentially have an adverse impact on his driver's record. However, 
um, he's going to have to appear, like Kevin said. Um, in Pennsylvania, it is required that the defendant appear in court whether they have an attorney or not. Other benefits under the modal, excuse me, I cannot talk tonight, under the motor vehicle related services. So there is a benefit for driver's license and suspension. Um, there's two and a half hours of attorney time uh, when the covered person's been denied a uh, driver's license or their license has been canceled, suspended, or revoked. Um, where there's a, a right to appeal and when the legal assistance is needed to reinstate or maintain a driver's license because of job related matters or medical reasons. And Kevin, would you like to elaborate on that? I know you handle a lot of these. Well, the problem with um, mainly the, the suspension or revocation, um, cancellation or revocation are extreme situations. PennDOT um, normally only does that with a habitual offender. Um, to give you an example of a habitual offender is somebody who has multiple DUIs and PennDOT will then list them as a habitual offender, add additional suspension to that, and administratively, they're allowed to do that. So it's very difficult to appeal those um, because you have to appeal the underlying conviction. And that's where many people make the mistake. They get a license suspension because they pled guilty to something that they didn't realize was a suspendable offense. And then they go and they appeal. They get the notice of the PennDOT hearing. They appeal the PennDOT hearing, but they haven't appealed the underlying traffic violation. So their suspension is upheld. For you to have any chance of winning a suspension, you have to appeal the underlying traffic violation if you lose at the magistrate level. And Kevin, where would they appeal those? Do they do that in the Court of Common Pleas? They do that um, in the Court of Common Plea. There is a fee. Uh, normally it's the prothonotary's office or as some people have changed it to the Office of Court Records, but it's always going to be the prothonotary's office. And that's where you file your appeal. It's a statutory appeal um, or some still call it a summary appeal for the traffic ticket. And then a PennDOT appeal is also filed, but that's an entirely different form. They require filing fees and those fees range across the, straight, uh, across the state from um, like $50 to up to $100, $150 in some jurisdictions. So what do we generally do um, in our office for those two and a half hours? What, what do you usually do to assist the member and advise them whether or not the appeals can be successful but you know, that's, that's before we have to send spent, them on their way? <laughs> because I need to see everything. And in most cases, these are multiple offenses. So I've got to see their driver history. I've got to see their license restoration requirements. Um, and then uh, I'll also look up to see what the appeal process is in that particular state. So a lot of that time is eaten up by me doing the research. And then of course they would need to then get a referral to an attorney uh, to if they want to have them handle the actual appeal hearings. So you're basically doing an investigative side, uh, reviewing all that information. On this end. Right, letting them know their chances of success, you know, that sort of thing and referring them if necessary. Exactly. Okay. Other benefits under the motor vehicle related services. Property damage for motor vehicle collisions. Um, we will provide a covered person with assistance up to, but not including the filing of a lawsuit to collect all property damage claims of $5,000 or less. Uh, these services are available for property damage incurred as a result of the covered person driving, being a passenger in, or being struck by another motor vehicle. Such assistance is limited to two and a half hours of attorney time per property claim. And I handle a lot of these myself. Um, you know, uh, generally, uh, as many of you know, the plan calls for one letter, a document review, a phone call. Um, in these situations, oftentimes it involves going back and forth for a bit with the insurance company, uh, trying to 
uh, get the case resolved for their property damage, whether it's damage to their car or maybe a laptop got damaged, it got thrown around in the car. Uh, sometimes clothing is ruined. Uh, you know, uh, this is all property damage claims and we will go uh, you know, two and a half hours and we'll do a couple extra letters, a couple extra phone calls in an attempt to resolve this up to the point where, you know, if it can't be resolved and they have to file small claims, then that's when it would uh, go into the preferred member discount. But I will say we do successfully resolve a lot of these. Awesome. Thanks, Belinda. Mm -hmm. Tips for traffic stops. Kevin, Kevin? do you want to go over these? <laughs> uh, the biggest thing is cooperate. Um, as you come to a complete stop, you turn your vehicle light, uh, vehicle off. If it's nighttime, you put your inside lights on, you put your hands on the steering wheel or the dashboard where they're clearly visible. Um, when the police officer asks you, if you don't already have them out, um, when they ask you for them, you ask permission to go get them and tell them where they are. Uh, stay in your vehicle. You don't get out unless instructed to do so. Um, if you get out of the vehicle and you want to be argumentative with the police officer, you'll get arrested. And what was just a simple traffic violation now becomes a criminal case because you'll get charged with um, disorderly conduct, or in worst case scenario, attempting to assault a police officer, and which then makes this excluded from the traffic benefit because you now have all these criminal charges. But you cooperate. If you challenge the ticket, you do it through the court system and you let us know immediately when you get the ticket, send it in for review, and we see what type of coverage it is. But in all cases, stay in your car, don't mouth off to the police officer. Um, there's a, a case a few years ago that uh, the state Supreme Court and the US Supreme Court has said that um, it's freedom of speech if you flip off a police officer, to which the Police Officer Association said, yes, it is freedom of speech, but we'll still charge you with disorderly conduct. So it's just be cooperative, be passive, do what you're told, and let your lawyer handle it. Good advice, thanks Kevin. Okay, that's all for our slideshow here. Do you have several things in chat, so we'll have to go through that and see what we have in there. Okay. I just wanted to mention, I'm gonna have to scoot, um, but I wanted to thank everybody for attending tonight and thank my team for doing a, a good job and answering lots of questions. So they've got some more questions to answer for you. So by all means, ask away. Uh, you've got all the experts here. I know absolutely nothing, but uh, <laughs> I thank you all for attending. I'm just gonna, I have to scoot and go to my next appointment. So thank you. See you, Mike. See you, Mike. Anybody have any questions?